God calling. Gosh, with this breeze, it's so nice that I could sit here all day. <laughs> Just spend time with God and with you and share the things that he would have us to do. And Sometimes maybe he just wants us to sit at his feet, share a cup of coffee. <laughs> Why not? I think the world could go on just fine. You know, sometimes people forget that, that there is a plan to all the world events, that there is a purpose to everything under the sun. That, that famous song, turn, 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 that says to everything there's a reason, a purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to reap, a time to sow. That's not just platitudes. That's a fact. That's a reality that there is a time for everything. And as much as we don't like some of the Eastern ideas that we think are too mystical to be acceptable in the West, they have as much validity by looking at us and saying we're too hyper to recognize the simplicity that God wants for us. So there's a balance in between that there is a time for what used to be called meditation where you stop and think about what God has said, where you consider well your ways, where you arrange the thought patterns of your mind so that you would be in communication and in conversation with your God. <laughs> if you define meditation that way, I don't think you'll find a problem with it. But then you can't be so esoteric that you become a monk and you sit alone and contemplate the walls because you want to protect yourself from all the inputs in the world. But you have to find what Jesus had. He did meditate. He did rest. He did preach. He did teach. He did share. He did confront. He did die. He did, rose from, he did rise from the dead. And he does live. And he did it all in perfect balance because he did one thing. He looked for his father and he looked to his father and he said whatsoever he saw his father doing that he did and so that's what we do when we take a moment take some time when we look to God in the morning when we look to God in the noon when we look to God at night and we don't look to the living God as though he were far away or some frivolous religious idea or dogma or doctrine and we don't program our minds so that we automatically go on autopilot and do our own thing but we look to God to be participant with us sharing with us the direction we should go as we learn to listen to him as he says turn to the right turn to the left go forward go back be still stop listen in reality, the living God, your God and mine, is as real and as personable as you want him to be. If you stay far away from him, you'll never be as close as he intended for you to be. But if you recognize him in everything that you do, and you commit all things unto him, I think you'll find that Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 will teach you the way you should go. In God Calling... When guidance tarries, as I prompt you, act. When you have no clear guidance, then go forward quietly along the path of duty I have set before you. No fear, no panic, quietly doing your daily duty. This attitude of faith will receive its reward as surely as acting upon my direct guidance. Rejoice in the sense of security that is yours. And you know, in seeking, whenever I do, to hear from God, when I hear Him speak to me in the mornings through emotionals, devotionals, Bible studies, it's very simple to just 
recognize that he gives us work for our hands. He gives us opportunities to do those things that are right in front of us. We don't have to create some some new ministry, some new church, some new idea, or some new thing, you know, to keep ourselves occupied. He's already given us all that we need for godliness. He's already prepared us for what we need to do each day. All we need to do is ask him and be directed, and then commit our ways unto him, as the psalmist said, and he would guide our path. And so as you commit your way unto him, as it says, that if you get no direct guidance, as you trust also in him, as you delight in the Lord, then those things that he has already begun to work out in you will continue on as you step forward in faith, knowing that God is working in you both to do and to will his good pleasure as well as to reveal himself in sometimes his silences as much as his conversation. I know for me, <laughs> my first thoughts, <laughs> my first thoughts, <laughs> always, if the Lord doesn't speak to me in some morning devotion or evotion or some quiet reflection, then my thought straight away is, okay, Lord, what's going on? What are you trying to tell me? Is there sin in my life? Did I blow it? What's going on? Come on now, God. Let's get real. <laughs> are you like that? If God doesn't immediately speak to you, do you run through your list of uh-ohs? <laughs> I do. Because, you know, the scripture says, let a man examine himself and see if he be in the faith. Let a man judge himself, and he should not be judged. Let a man... <laughs> look into the perfect mirror of the law and see what type of man he is, and then walk away and not forget what the law has said that he is, which is a sinner saved by grace, which is a man that all men are liars and the truth is not in them. That is a man that has a heart that is deceitfully wicked and perverse above all things. And out of it come all the sins and yuck that we all know. And when I go through my list of uh-ohs, <laughs> I go, aha! And most of it is always settled in the very sure and perfect confidence in what Jesus did for me. And what he did for you is the same. He forgave us. He cleansed us from all unrighteousness. He died on the cross for our sins. When I consider that against my list of uh-ohs, I always get a little smile and smirk and go on my way knowing that it's not because of something that is happening to me, but what God may be doing in reality with what he wants to accomplish through or around me. And so if there are silences, fear not. But the Lord is with you. The Lord will guide you. The Lord is always going to be your confidence and your shield. And he's your strong tower where you can flee in times even when you have doubt. It's okay to have doubts as long as you take it to God and leave it there. It's when you have doubts and you promote it to someone else that you need to worry. But Jesus knows you. He has you in the palm of his hand. And if you're in his palm, I think that's a pretty good place to be.